Hi. In this video, we are going to give you an end-to-end -end demo on the newly released data marketplace in SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. The data marketplace is part of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, SAP's strategic solution for all data warehousing use cases. Besides seamlessly integrating with SAP and non-SAP sources to break down data silos and empowering business and IT users alike, we strive for time to value in analytics projects. Many state-of-the-art analytical use cases today don't only rely on internal company data, but also on external data products. Think of customer segments, supply chain information, or carbon emission data. While many fault providers are out there, integrating the data has always been an ongoing challenge. With the data marketplace, we allow you to integrate external data in matter of clicks instead of projects. And with the demo coming up, we would like to show you how you can leverage the marketplace capabilities to integrate the data and then combine it with your internal data that, for example, comes in with a BW bridge or with connectors to cloud storages um, or any other business application your business needs. In the demo scenario, we will show you a use case that many of our customers are asking for. They have existing BW investments, sales and distribution data, heavy extractor logic from SAP source system that they want to bring into Data Warehouse Cloud that they have brought into Data Warehouse Cloud with the BW bridge um, as the migration path to Data Warehouse Cloud um, and based on which they have modeled um, their reporting uh, in this case, their, their sales numbers by year and region. And now they want to bring in external data to augment the views and get to a more holistic decision foundation um, and discover opportunities and mitigate risk where the user will go into the data marketplace to consume data. And in the demo, we will also show what actually happens and how it works. And we will actually also share a product and list a product on the data marketplace to help you understand how the mechanism behind works, as anybody can be a data provider, can be a commercial one that puts uh, products on the data marketplace for public visibility, for public access, um, for public data monetization with a price, but it can also be private products that you want to share with colleagues, with business partners like your suppliers, your distributors, um, your service agencies, um, as the data marketplace allows you to manage who can access a data product. But let's look directly into the system. We start, um, as discussed, with a um, dashboard in SAP Analytics Cloud, where a customer has his revenue location over the past years by sales organization by location, and now wants to understand in his existing markets how big the threat of carbon emissions is, how good a country is in reducing the annual carbon footprint, to understand um, the risks as in the future this will lead to suitable or less suitable um, location factors. And in order to do so, we're now going to um, improve the view, the underlying view with the annual carbon footprint development data. To do that, the user um, switches his perspective and goes into SAP Data Warehouse Cloud into the data builder in a sustainable sales growth space where he finds the view based on which the just shown SAP Analytics Cloud dashboard is. And you see the BW, the internal data um, is is shared from a BW Bridge space um, that was recently announced at TechEd um, to bring over your existing BW staging logic into Data Warehouse Cloud and then use cross-based sharing to make that BW ava data available in Data Warehouse Cloud. The user now can go to the data marketplace, which is embedded into all Data Warehouse Cloud systems and can go to the landing page where the user is now presented with featured data providers and data products, as well as the most popular 
data products um, that are being used. And in addition, the user can go to the search area of the data marketplace where he can filter through the data products, can search by matching SAP applications, can check for the data category um, and use case um, that he's looking for data, obviously can decide whether it's commercial data um, that is locked with a license key that you need to unlock it, whether it's free data, it's data that is directly shipped, or whether it's maybe also data services that are externally delivered outside of Data Warehouse Cloud, whether it's one-time um, data downloads or whether it's data that is being updated, obviously then with the delivery pattern, the matching industry, the data provider, the regional coverage. So basically um, all facets that are interesting in the face of data product evaluation when the user finds um, and, and searches for the ideal product. Um, and that being said, this demo is also in a beta environment. So the amount of providers um, and coverage across industries will rise over time. Now for um, the case as described, the customer uh, will look for carbon for CO2 emission data um, that is provided by data site that have connected um, the great data from our world um, in data. Um, and then you can basically, um, each product has a um, data product page where information about the data product is stated, um, visual information, sample data to understand the structure. Um, and then if you want to load the data, um, it was always, a, it is our claim, we want to make data available in clicks, not projects, which basically means you simply need to select the space into which you want to load um, the data product or where the data marketplace um, should bring the data into. If you now click on load product, the data marketplace takes care um, of bringing the data um, into your space. And this is something you can monitor um, as a data buyer, as a data integrator. So the data marketplace now in the background um, creates the artifacts um, and all the products that you've loaded, um, you can track. And in the so-called delivery tracking, uh, where basically um, each load can transparently be, be managed. And a data product does not mean it's a single artifact. It can be multiple artifacts, often transactional data um, and master data that comes with it, um, or in this case, the raw data, um, as well as um, yeah, certain curated data um, as the ranking numbers, for example. And um, those artifacts um, are now created in the space. So if the user now goes into the data builder and um, he finds the created artifacts, the um, annual CO2 emissions that he can use um, in the existing views view that we've just seen. So the views are now that are acquired in the data marketplace. There's no integration effort required and you can directly start to work with the data in combination with your internal data. Now with the data at hand, we actually have a challenge. Our internal data um, has only um, two digit ISO codes um, and the acquired data um, actually has um, English country names, which is a data challenge where also the data marketplace helps as we, from an SAP perspective, provide so-called data crafting artifacts that help you um, with such data modeling challenges um, as we, for example, have a country master that you can load in the data marketplace and use to join these two data assets together. So let's load another product. To do that, we basically just go into the marketplace again to find the product, load the product, and that um, in, in just a few minutes to, to solve the data challenge at hand. And once saved, we can now advance to the data marketplace where we search for with city master data as well as country master data. Um, so two digit, three digit ISO codes, simply select the space. And this is also what we wanna show. It's super easy, super convenient, no 
CSV, Wrangling and so on. Um, simply and now the same logic comes um, as with the last product. So once you hit load product, the data marketplace now creates the artifacts, create the connection between data provider um, and consumer system. And you have the country master data artifact um, available um, in your space. And this we can now use with the native data warehouse cloud functionality. You could also use um, written SQL, but I prefer the graphical view builder. And I now project and filter my data um, to basically have my helper table that allows me to bring the internal and external data together easily. And once this is done, once I have basically now my required ESO code, I can now join it together with the external data. And in this case, the data quality is sufficient so I can perform the join and now have my carbon footprint information amended to my existing view. And after deploying, I now have the new KPIs and attributes available for my charts in SAP Analytics Cloud. So if I switch back to the SAP Analytics Cloud perspective, I can now, um, in this demo scenario, color my uh, map with the KPI of the carbon footprint emission change compared from 2019 to 2020 to see how good countries are in reducing the annual CO2 emission um, as an indicator on yeah, the, the active approach against climate change and provide the leadership with information on it. And obviously can now do further, further SAP Analytics Cloud work. But actually, as we currently only have internal data, we actually on our map don't see information about potential target markets. Um, and this is where in the next step, we are going to show how we bring further data in to also show how the carbon footprint and um, CO2 emission um, development or perspectives in markets that we as a company want to go into to factor in this topic. And to basically show how you can share data with other data warehouse cloud tenants or other spaces, we changed the perspective to the data sharing cockpit, which is the area for people that want to share data um, in the data marketplace um, and can now s uh, define the data products that they want to make um, available on the data marketplace, either for public sale or as in this case for a limited audience, as we are now going to share our target markets that an agency um, has provided for us, how we make that available to the other tenant. So, in the data sharing cockpit, we now have different apps and the data product listing um, is a central component that allows us to create a listing in the data marketplace. And now you can define a full marketing mix. For this demo, we're going to concentrate on the core um, initial fields. So basically you define um, a description um, and a title first and foremost, um, a description that is now as it is a private product, very fundamental. We share information um, on, on country level. We can define now a lot of details. Um, the license key is the locking mechanism in order that only people who have a contractual right can, can access it. Um, and now finally, we select the space and the artifacts that we want to ship. The user now in this view the space, we only have one view, so that is very simple. And the user, can select which columns of the view he wants to ship and can also filter if he only wants to share a subset um, of the view and potentially define multiple products on the same view, which is often the case with commercial data. That is, for example, segmented by country or category or whatnot. Now with the listing, 
we can now go into, we can basically list it and now can define the license that um, allows somebody um, to access the product um, and allows the data provider to monetize or in this case with an internal one um, to share with colleagues uh, that only should have access to it. So you basically define a license header um, that is um, especially with contracts like your digital twin you can define for how long it is valid and for how long the data marketplace should update um, the data um, in the target system. Um, and you can now select one or multiple products that are part of the license. Um, in this case, um, only the target markets. And you can generate activation keys that you share with users that should be able to um, activate the license and load products that are part of the license. And now we are basically um, going to switch the perspectives and go back to the consumer side of the house um, and actually load that internal data. In order to do so, we can now search exactly for that product that we've just listed. Very fundamental as it is an internal one. Um, and now you cannot just click load, but you need a license key. If you just enter something that obviously does not work, but in this case, I have the fitting license key, I can activate it. And now it's the same procedure as for a free product, just selecting the space. Um, and once load product is hit, the data marketplace takes care of bringing the data from one tenant to another one. And um, as a consumer, um, you can track, especially with updates, a very important feature and can monitor that the data is transferred successfully. In this case also very simple, just one artifact that is now available in this space. And now as we um, have two different data sets, um, we basically need further functionality to harmonize the data. Um, and this is where we're going to show a very important feature in the context of the data marketplace, which is the intelligent lookup. It's the harmonization engine um, of Data Warehouse Cloud that allows the business user to bring data sets together that don't have a joint condition, as we just had in the previous example, where we had some ISO codes or whatnot. But as you will now see with our target markets data that we've loaded, the countries are written a little bit different. So um, semantically, you know how to match it. Um, but as a consumer, you now need to do a couple of decisions in how you actually want to map that data. And in a sustainable fashion, because once you made a mapping decision, um, this mapping information is reusable and you only need to define it once. So the, here we are now um, again in a drag and drop environment. We have a template for basically the input table, with it, which is our CO2 emission view, um, where we basically select the pairing column and we then select the view that we want to harmonize with that table, which is our target information. And we say which columns we actually want to add um, to that um, table. And we can now decide between the match strategies. In the initial release, we can either do an exact match and then everything the, where the values are the same, it matches and the other one, it doesn't. And you define a follow-up strategy. Or, and in our case, um, we take the second matching strategy, with is, which is the fuzzy match, which leverages um, SAP HANA Cloud um, fuzzy matching logic, which allows basically to have some fuzziness. And then you can tweak around with the scores um, that the intelligent lookup um, should behave, behave based on. Um, and now we basically match those two different country fields. And that's a very important setting. We actually can decide whether the records for which we didn't find a lookup value, uh, whether we want to include them in the output um, and also define a default value like others or unmatched, or whether we want to not include them and um, only what is really governed and harmonized um, should be made available for reporting which again also um, is not the case just with the join. We first need to deploy it and then basically 
execute the rule um, that we've defined. And now the user gets a visual feedback on how good his rule definition was. So in this case, basically 81% did an exact match. And then basically we have further values um, that we can check where um, an exact match was not there. Um, so we have buckets, review buckets, where it was above 80%, um, where the user can just confirm that the matching was correct. We have multiple matches where in the lookup table between 100% and 80%, multiple records were found and the user needs to decide which one is the correct one. And then there are definitely unmatched records where the user needs to help or define another rule, a subsequent rule that only applies for the unmatched records. So it's really also an iterative way where you learn about your data um, and can act upon it. And now the user um, one by one or multi-select can basically um, approve the review buckets um, that are all pretty straightforward, but that also show where it's good that you can confirm um, or reject. So after we confirmed the proposal for Congo, we actually now see that Iran and Iraq are actually uh, pretty close, uh, three letters out of four. So it's a very high score, but it is definitely not the same. So this one we would definitely reject and find a different uh, matching um, option for it. And also, uh, if we pause here for a second, um, you also see that Vietnam and Vietnam, just with a space in the middle, it's obviously not exactly the same value, but the day intelligent lookup helps you um, to cope um, with these challenges in a very easy and yeah, um, guided procedure. And every rejected record goes into the unmatched work area. And this way, the user can now bring those two assets together in a couple of clicks. It's not an IT project, it's something a business user can do. And that also, if you think about company data matching, if you have your supplier data and you buy um, data on supplier risk, for example, then a company like Lufthansa, the airline probably, um, there are then several entities, Lufthansa, Cargo, and, um, and so on and so forth, where it's not even an IT decision how you do an ETL process, but it's a business decision how you map it. And the intelligent lookup is an area with which you can create an environment where the business user can take these decisions. Um, they are, you can understand them. Somebody can go in and see how was the matching done. Um, to also yeah, create credibility um, out there. And basically um, you also get feedback on which rows um, are basically matched, um, how far you are with your matching progress. And um, with that, I would actually like to end this um, matching and intelligent lookup part of the demo that I wanted to include in the end-to-end -end data marketplace demo, because we really see that Integrating external data also means you need to integrate into a powerful platform where you have the tools available to work with the data, to harmonize it and make it ready for analytics, ready for machine learning, um, ready for process integration. So to sum it up, basically the data marketplace is an area where you can find data products for your data challenge from open data um, to commercial data from providers like PricewaterhouseCoopers. You have, you can see it as a complementary deployment channel. So you can keep your standalone analytics products from a data provider, your dashboards, but you can take the data marketplace as you can bring your license. You don't need to necessarily buy via SAP um, and um, consume the data in an integrated fashion with um, your internal, mostly SAP data. And the core of the data marketplace is the managed data integration and update management. This is something I haven't shown um, in this demo. So if the data provider has a publishing functionality where if new data is available, he can publish it and it's being updated in all tenants that have 
um, subscribed to a data product. Um, and the data marketplace is an embedded feature in Data Warehouse Cloud, which means you can leverage the Data Warehouse Cloud functionality um, to then use the HANA Cloud functionality, to use Intelligent Lookup, and basically do um, the data management work that is required to activate the value of the data. And then we have seamless um, integration into SAP Analytics Cloud. You can connect with data intelligence to a space. You can, again, leverage HANA Cloud functionality, or of course, SAP Data Warehouse Cloud is open, so you can use third-party frontends or use third-party um, data science tools, um, third-party um, data management frameworks if you want to further process the data inside your company. Thanks for watching the demo.